So we're finally back to uh, some timber framing. Um, I've been dying to get back to it here for, well, for a couple months now. So the weather's looking like it's finally going to take a turn. Hopefully it uh, does. So I've got uh, four more knee braces. I've got to I've got to cut for the uh, the final bent. Um, but what I wanted to talk about first before we get into any of that, I'll I'll do a this will be a separate video from the braces. So in case you guys don't feel like sitting through uh, sitting through another 20 minute video on explanations, you know, they'll, maybe I'll show something of me actually doing something. So. I know there's been a lot of talking ones lately, and I know a lot of you guys didn't sign up for that, but just kind of the way it is right now. So anyhow, when you're going to build your your frame, like I said before, you know your your first step, anything you're ever going to build, your first step's going to be your design phase. So for those of you who are going to try to tackle designing this yourself rather than going through an engineer, which I didn't go through an engineer, but I can't sit here and tell you guys to bypass an engineer. If you don't have a good understanding on building things to begin with, or you know you don't have kind of a, a little bit of a background in uh, loads and things like that, I, I kind of recommend you go to an engineer. So that said, this video is going to be on designing your frame yourself. And bypassing the engineer and so there's a few things and we'll do we'll do a couple of parts to this because there's just just so much information to cover you can't really do it all in one video so and so anyhow when you start to design your frame you need to understand the loads on your <clears throat> on your building um, I see on the forums a lot of questions. People say, "I they say, hey, yeah, I've got a pile of eight by eights. I want to build a thirty by thirty or a thirty by forty timber frame structure with it." Well, that's that's not going to work. Uh, like I said in the previous video on this subject, you you figure out what you need before you ever cut a log into a camp. Uh, you don't. You don't cut a board unless it's siding or something like that. That's going to be what it is no matter what. But other than that, you don't cut a stick until uh, you have a cut sheet and you know exactly what you need. Otherwise, you're going to be very frustrated when you've wasted a lot of material or you try to ask too much of the material that you already cut. So in order to arrive at that cut sheet to get your dimensions on your beams and your lumber and all that stuff and what you're going to need, you need to start figuring out your loads for the building. Um, so I encourage you to go to your local code enforcement office, office and find out what the uh, snow load is for your area. It's going to go uh, per square foot up here. I think my snow load is like 50 pounds per square foot. Um, you need to have an idea of what the materials you're using are going to weigh. And if you're doing it with green lumber, make sure you know what that green lumber weighs per board foot and figure your loads accordingly. Like uh, I'm building this with white pine, and white pine's two and a half pounds per board foot. Green is the average weight of it. So, and your oaks, your hemlocks, things like that are going to be a lot heavier. So, in order to figure your loads, you need to understand what a few, what some of the terminology means. So, you're going to start with your roof, okay? So, depending on how you do your roof, are you going to do regular joists? with uh, a regular, excuse me, regular rafters with a ridge board? Are you going to do uh, big timber frame trusses and then use purlins? Uh, there, there's a few things you can do. Are you going to go common rafters or, or, just, or just whatever? Are you going to go with a gamber roof? Or are you going to go with a straight up roof? Are you going to put dormers on? So that, that's all questions you need to ask yourself. A lot of people design things from the ground up and this is one of those things that I've learned through a lot of reading and just practice and doing it here at my place. Uh, when you're designing this building, you start from the roof down because you may you may think you need an eight by eight post, and you may think that that's going to do just fine for what you need for a wall post. But there are 
certain loads that that wall post can can take. So you could start at the floor and have smaller beams. By the time you get up to the roof, those the the weight loads on each post may be too much for that post to handle. So you start at the roof. So right now your first phase, you're basically trying to figure out how much does this thing weigh? What's the total building when you're done with it going to weigh? And it's not as hard as you think to figure out. Um, check out the forestreform.com and look at the toolbox section. It has all of these load calculators in this. I mean all of them. It is the best tool that I have found for design purposes for a do-it-yourselfer. It's phenomenal. The best part about it is the numbers are very liberal on it. Usually I don't call that a great thing, but the numbers are liberal on it. So it's going to shoot you out some numbers for something that's just slightly larger than what you actually need, but go with it. If you're not hiring an engineer, go a little bit bigger. And that way you know you're safe as far as what your beams and your posts can handle. So when you start at the roof, say, uh, let's say we're going to do a... Uh, timber frame truss. So they may be spaced every 10 feet um, and then say you're going to have purlings across there. So let's see if we can move the camera and I'll give you an idea what that's going to look like. <coughs> Alright, let's play with some sticks here. Everybody likes sticks? All these examples, I guess. All right. So, say right here. Say these are two. Uh, say these are two. Help me out here, guys. I can't talk today. Say these are two. Uh, two of your uh, timber frame truss rafters. So, say this is the eave. Say that's towards the peak. Say these are purlins. All right. So your purlins are going to go across like this. And no, these are not to scale. No hate mail, they're not to scale. So, alright. So the first thing you have to figure out is what load are you worrying about figuring out first. First things first, now we'll, we'll throw one more oversized rafter into this, just to, kind of important for the example. I know somebody's going to bitch because they're not to scale models, but let's work with what we have. Okay, so say you have three rafters here, three of your uh, your timber frame trusses. This is the eave, like I said, this would be the ridge. All right, and these would be your purlins. Now these purlins are going to sit in the pockets in each rafter, all right? So the first load you need to figure out, because right now you're trying to figure out how much weight can that rafter support? What size rafter do you need to support the weight that it has to handle? So what area are you trying to support with this rafter? What you're looking for first, you're looking for the tributary area. Okay, in the tributary area, so picture this in the middle, and then measure halfway between this rafter and the next rafter over. That midpoint on both sides is going to be a tributary area. All right? That's the weight that that one rafters that that one rafter is going to support. So you figure out what area that is. Um, what do I have here? I got some of my load calculations here. All right, on my calculations, I rounded up a little bit because I like to be safe. So I figured a. Let me figure there. Looks like I figured 100 square feet for my tributary area in between each rafter. So, so you've got your tributary area. So now you know what the square footage is. Now you need to know the weight that that rafter's got to support. So you take what's called your live load and your dead load. Your dead load is going to be the weight of the materials. That's going to be the weight that does not change. Like I said, if you're building with green, Figure for a green figure for green weights. Because it's gonna take a few years, a long time for those beams to dry out to get down to like 11, 12 percent moisture content. So they're gonna be heavy for a long time. So up here, up here we have a uh, we have a 50 pound per square foot 
snow load. That would be your live load. That's the load that's going to change. My dead load, by the time I added all my material weights up and what I figured, I believe I figured right around 12 pounds per square foot for roof. Uh, could be a little bit more than that, but like I said, I rounded up my areas to cover my ass. So we'll figure 12 pounds for, per square foot, keep the math easy, okay? So we have a 100 square foot area we're trying to support. We have a uh, 6,200 pound load on there. You combine your live load and your dead load to figure your total load. That's going to be the weight that this one rafter has to support. You go to the toolbox in the forestry form, you look up your uh, you know, your beam and stringer calculator, or your, uh, your beam calculator, and it will, you punch in the numbers once you go through the menus, you punch in the numbers, your live load, your dead load, the species of wood you're using, you hit OK and that thing's going to calculate whether the size beam you think you need is going to pass or not. You keep changing the size of that beam in the calculator until you get the number that passes. Now I believe if I do end up doing the timber frame trusses, I believe I had whew, I had a big number on that. I think that's why I decided to go with common rafters. But for what I needed with white pine, I figured a 7-inch seven, seven by 12-inch rafter would pass the test. And that gives me, I believe that was going to give me, remember the number exactly guys, I, I think that was going to give me a 0.4-inch uh, deflection at midpoint. So it passed. Um, so anyhow. So now you know what this is. You carry down from that then you're going to be getting into, uh, like I had a, I've got a second floor in that barn, so I need to know what my uh, tie beams were going to, what I was going to need for them. So rearrange our sticks again. Say these are our tie beams. All right. Hear that cow in the background? I think they're looking for me. So. Say these are three tie beams. Say these are your floor joists. Again, they're going to be notched in. All right. Same thing with your tributary area. You're going in between your joists and you're figuring out what that load is. So you repeat that process from the roof down. The process for the roof is the same as it is for the floor. When you get into your wall posts and you're going to design, so say this is your wall post. This is a piss poor design. And say uh, so that's on the outside of the building. You're looking for tributary area again. So you're going in between this and the next wall post to one side. And in between this and the wall post to the other side. Then you're going out halfway in between this and say your center post. That area will be your tributary area. At that point you are figuring out not just what your you're not figuring out the wall post strength just for the first floor or for the uh, your second floor you also have to add in that roof tributary area too that's going to tell you what weight is going to be on that and there's another calculator in that toolbox that will help you determine the size of your wall post now I hope I hope I'm explaining this well enough. There's a lot of people out there hell of a lot better at it than I am. So And you're basically going to do those load calculations the same way for everything. Um you're going to be uh every rafter, every floor joist, everything you're figuring out your tributary area. When you're figuring out your tie beam sizes. Let's say we have three tie beams here. Think, didn't I just do this? So you have your three tie beams here. All right, this would be your tributary area right in here. Now keep in mind, you need to add in the weight of materials for the rafters or the uh, floor joists that are going to be notched into these tie beams and your flooring plus what you intend to use that floor for. Most of your second floor in a house 
I want to say, and somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I want to say that those are figured for 60 pounds per square foot. When I figured my barn, I actually sat down and, uh, you know, figured out some weights for green oak, green cherry, some of the hardwoods that will be drying up in, up in the second floor in the wood shop. And I actually figured out how tall of a pile of lumber I could stack green based on my, uh, and that's how I figured my live, or my, uh, my live load for it. Again, live load, what its intended use is when it comes to the flooring structure. Dead load, the weight of the materials. Add them together to get your total load. Figure out your tributary area and find out how many, uh, how many pounds per square foot that that, that that beam is going to be expected to carry. Um, like I said, Forest Reform Toolbox on the side of the website page has all these calculators in there. I highly, highly recommend that if you guys are looking to design these yourselves, do some reading through that forum and check out that toolbox because it's the best one that I've been able to find in doing this. No. All right, so there's a half-assed demonstration on design and I'm sorry if I didn't say it clear enough. Um, if you have questions, clear. if you need a clarification, feel free to ask questions in the comments below. The, uh, basically what, I, what I'm trying to get at with, with all this, I, I see a lot of people want to dive into a project like this and they just think they're going to cut some notches and cut some mortises, cut some tenons, make some pegs, throw it all together and it's just going to work. I had that same thought when I started out on this project. And am I glad I found I did a lot of reading. I've been studying on this for probably the last five or six years. I've read just about anything I can get my hands on to do this. I've perused any forum I could find. The uh, Timber Frame Guild's website is a really good resource. I mean, I've read everything I could. I even stopped by old barns that are abandoned whenever I can around here, and there's a lot of them. And... Uh, I'll check the joinery out, I take measurements and and things like that. So if you guys are in your design phase, like uh like Jesse and Alyssa are from uh Pure Living for Life, they're they're in the design phase right now. They're at a good point for figuring this. You just sit down, figure your loads, and those loads are gonna tell you what size material you need. Um and actually by the time you're done you'll you'll be pretty close to accurate on how much the entire building's going to weigh it, it's kind of neat to be able to see that so just remember if you don't figure this stuff out and you just go to slap this together this is a lot of work to do this i mean i'm on i've been at this out here for a year and a half this fall will be two years i don't have a lot to show for it right now because i'm a very busy guy and Time is usually not on my side, but this year, hopefully I've generated the time I need to to work on this thing. But uh, you don't want to pour your heart and soul into something like this and then have it, have it fail on you. You don't want to, uh, I mean, that would be heartbreaking. And when you see the videos that I have out, and you see the size of these beams that I'm working with, there's a reason for the size of those. Those are a little bit oversized, but not by a lot. And if I had done what I thought, you know, based on stick frame or stick framing and building conventionally, I would have a pile of firewood sitting there because what I was originally going to go with was just too damn small. I mean, it was everything was way too small. So fortunately, somebody has taken the time to put the information out there, all you need to do is go and find it. Do your own research. Don't just take my word for it because who knows, I may have missed something very important. Do your research. Do some reading. Take the time to study what you're doing before you ever, before you even cut a beam on your sawmill or, or order what you need. So, anyhow, uh, that's it for that little ramble on the... Uh, and being a do-it-yourself engineer, um, hopefully uh, I wish you guys all luck with your projects if you're in these. 
And if there's any questions you have, anything I can help you with, feel free to ask. Uh, check the forestry forum out. They have really good information in there. There's really good threads in there. So with that said, you guys have a good day. If you like this, feel free to subscribe. And if you subscribe, you want to be notified of the videos coming out, hit the little bell next to the subscribe icon, and it will take you through the menus for your notifications. You guys have a good day, and on the next video we will be actually cutting something. So I'll actually be showing you doing something. I'm actually going to start filming that right now. So take it easy, guys.